Nuevo México nuestro, tierra que me vio nacer, me ha visto vivir y me verá morir, me enseñó a querer. Tierra llena de risa, de llanto y encanto, de promesas y desencanto, de rosas y espinas. Tierra de cielos altos y limpios, horizontes lejanos y místicos, de suelo bravo y agreste, de vientos secos y fuertes. Un mundo entre cielo y suelo, entre este y oeste, un hemisferio, en conjunto un universo que es y ha sido siempre nuestro. En el seno de la montaña, en el corazón del valle, en el regazo del llano, mi cariño duerme y sueña. Pino, piñón y pozole, Chile, chicharrón y atole, empanadas y frijoles, hurracas, chinchontes, flores. No me quitan las veredas del recuerdo y del sentimiento a mi tierra amarilla, a la tierra ama mía. Muchas veces en la brisa de alguna noche tranquila, hay susurros y murmullos y suspiros indecisos. Son las voces de los viejos que perduran en el viento. Tienen tanto que decirnos para el tiempo en que vivimos. No te olvides ni te entregues. No te dobles ni te dejes. Levántate y anda, atrévete y manda. La voz sale de la tierra, sube sola la alta sierra, baja triste al hondo valle a decirte lo que vales. Ulibarri was a little guy that came out of the mountains of northern New Mexico a long time ago. And he's been looking back in that direction ever since. I think it was Homer who said, I am a part of all that I have met. Well, all that I have met started in 1919 when I was born. And I was born in Las Nutrias. Las Nutrias was not even a village. There were a string of ranches along a stream. And uh, my grandfather and his brothers went there in the latter part of the 19th century. And they established the ranches along the stream. And I was there until I was about seven years old. My family was not rich, but they weren't poor. And I was very solitary. There were no children to play with. My dogs were my companions. And I'd roam all over the fields and all over the woods, uh, doing the sort of things that uh, intrigued me, or even sleeping under a pine tree. He was white, white as memories lost. He was free, free as happiness is. He was fantasy, 
liberty and excitement. He filled and dominated the mountain valleys and surrounding plains. He was a white horse that flooded my youth with dreams and poetry. I suppose I was very much of a daydreamer. My father was a heroic figure who right off in his quiet voice. He was a legend. The stories told about him were endless. Many a valiant cowboy swore to put his halter and his brand on the animal. But always he had to confess later that the mystic horse was more of a man than he. And when I was a little boy, he bought me a saddle that was not much bigger than a postage stamp. And we'd go off in the early spring. That led to a tremendous excitement, and tremendous amount of make-believe. Because at night, for example, we'd camp out under the stars. And around the campfire, in the early spring, the coyotes are hungry. First of all, we'd hear the howling of the coyotes, and that put the bejeebies into me. Then later, they'd creep in. They'd get bolder and bolder. And you could see their eyes glowing out there in the dark. I felt like an executioner but there was no turning back. I whirled a rope and throw the obedient lasso, a rope that whistles and burns the saddle tree, smoking, burning gloves, eyes burning in their sockets, mouth parched, fevered forehead, the whole earth shakes and shudders, deep, gasping, quiet. The wonder horse is mine. Up there in Tierra Maria, we have the Chama. And it'd be flooded in the spring. Well, my father would have to cross it. And there would be rocks tumbling down on the water. And there would be trunks of trees and all kinds of debris. And we'd cross the stream and the horses would have to swim across. And the water was ice cold because there were big chunks of ice in there too. And again, that was frightening. All of that was food for daydreaming. I decided to turn him loose in the fence pasture. No animal had ever escaped from that pasture. My father was a man of the outdoors. But he had a love of literature. My mother and my father both read books to me in Spanish and in English. My father and mother both had two years of college, which was quite extraordinary back in 1918. I got to know the classics, including the Quixote, He's not there. I see that during the night, he walked incessantly, sniffing, searching for a way out. He did not find one. He made one for himself. So in the long winter nights, my father or my mother would read. I could visualize everything that happened. And I could hardly wait, and as I roamed the, the ranch during the day, my mind was full of those adventures that I had read about or heard about the night before. No matter how much it hurt me, I was rejoicing over the flight and freedom of the wonder horse. Now he would always be fantasy, freedom, and excitement. The wonder horse was transcendent. He had enriched my life forever. 
Perhaps even at that time, I became aware that there was something, a world beyond the pale, that only literature, that only art could capture and share something spiritual, something higher than reality as we can see and touch and feel. My grandmother smoked cigars. She was strong, strong as only she could be. Through the years, in so many situations, small and big tragedies, accidents and problems, I never saw her bend or fold. I can see her at this moment as if she were before my eyes. Her eyes fixed, I don't know where. Her thoughts fixed on I don't know what, an animated statue a petrified soul. It turns out my history is very much the history of New Mexico. So looking at my life, I'm looking at history. History made flesh and spirit. History come alive because it is alive in my flesh and soul. Why is literature so important? Literature is history. History come alive. Literature is the inside story the hidden story, what makes a people tick. My grandfather smoked cigars. The cigar was a symbol of the feudal lord, the patron. To suck on that tobacco was to drink from the fountains of power, the cigar gave you class. They say that when my grandfather died, my grandmother would light cigars and place them on the ashtrays around the house. The smell of the tobacco gave her the illusion that her husband was still around. As time went on, and after lighting many a cigar, she began to smoke the cigars. At nightfall, when the tasks of the day were done, she would lock herself in her room, sit on her rocker, and light her cigar. There in the light or in the shade of an old love, now an eternal love, the spiritual strength was forged that kept my grandmother straight, tall, and slender, facing the winds and storms of her full life. Tomorrow would be another day, but my grandmother would still be the same. Life, history, time is a continuum. It flows like a river flows. And I think we've tended to chop it up into past, 
present and future. And I see we've let the past drop out of the flow. And we are becoming a, a now people, a present people. The past is out of sight and the future is out of sight. And living in the present only is living in one dimension. And we are producing a generation of young people with historical amnesia, cultural amnesia. If you don't know where you came from, how in the heck are you going to know where you're at or where you're going? De la palabra literaria. Las escrituras nos dicen que en el principio fue la palabra y que la palabra se hizo carne. Así fue en el principio y así es todavía. When I was a freshman at UNM, I told my friends that someday I'm going to teach at this university. They all left, except me. And I think becoming a professor at the University of New Mexico was the greatest achievement in my life. I wanted to communicate my excitement, my fascination, my interest in literature to my students. I also felt it very important to pass on the Spanish language to as many students as I could. Where are you from? Boston. There is a narrow view of democracy that I don't like at all. I'm originally from East Africa, Ethiopia. That view of democracy that wants us all to look the same, to act the same, to read the same books, and spout off the same slogans. It is one thing to mass produce refrigerators or donuts. It's quite another to mass produce the citizenry. I liked Mi Abuela Cobra Bra Interes. Mm. I like that story. It's funny because I liked the play on words where, um, like, he became the county assessor. Yeah. Yeah, when he was just. Me as sore, <laughs> mine is too. <laughs> I think that diversity enhances the very concept of democracy, where different people with different backgrounds can work together for the same goals, each in his own way, to respect the difference, I think is a big test of democracy. Amena, mm -hmm. I like that story. And um, I was sitting down and reading it a lot of times. It was a, it was a long story, but then you know, I ignored all my homeworks for a while, just I wanted to finish. <laughs> so it was, it was very well. I hope that my students and my readers generally go away with a new understanding, a new awareness that the differences that separate us are mostly on the surface. Under the skin, all men are colored, and the color is red. And if my readers and my students find out that we're not that different, not that strange, not that suspect, there'll be a better understanding. To know is to love, and not to know is to fear. How beautifully nature clothes herself and what a smiling face it assumes when it's going to die. 
It probably is because she knows that the glories of today will be repeated next year and the year after eternally. It may be because she knows that after the winter comes the spring, that death is neither sorrow nor the end, but a rest and a beginning. Seventy-five, three quarters of a century. It's hard to believe. I hope through the years I've been able to communicate my love for the magic, the miracle, and the mystery of literature. If I can communicate that to my students, then they will make their own way and they will read a book, and then another, and another. And somehow, the literacy and the intelligence of the people is conserved. It lives on. If you know how to read and write, you know how to live and die. Something else that goes into my life work, as long as I'm at the University of New Mexico, a little Hispano from Chimayo, or Peñasco, or Polvadera, and say, well, if Julio Arrico could do it, I can do it. Now my generation is stepping off the stage, and it's up to the coming generations of Hispanics to do as much as we did. And what did we do? We only did what we could with what we had to do it with. That's all that can be asked of any human being. Do the best you can, but make sure it is the best you can. Something less is never enough. Now it's your turn. Go to the university, graduate from the university, make it, make it one way or another. The way is up, and the way up is not easy, but it's exciting. The higher up you go, the clearer the air is. The higher you go, the farther you can see. It's titillating and exciting to go up the mountain. So all of you have a mountain. Start climbing and keep on climbing. This Colores program is available on home video cassette for $19.95, plus shipping and handling. To order, call 1-800-328-5663.